Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allison and today I am finally getting back to my weekly reading updates. So there's like a whole slew of reasons why I have had such a hard time getting any filming done this summer. Um, I feel like I have not been, well I, I know I haven't been filming very often and I was trying to do it on an evening in the in the week I think it was Monday evening I was trying to do it on because normally my house is empty other than you know me and the cat and um, it just like with all of the holidays that were going on and um, it like being summer our schedule is just everywhere so no one's where they say they're going to be so I literally had so many weeks where I could not film uh, my other filming day that I normally have, which is either Friday or Saturday morning like I'm filming today, um, just were not available. Um, like my mom had surgery last week and normally she's the one that takes our boys on Friday night and they stay uh, over a little while on Saturday as well. And I just was not having any time to film, so that was really irritating. And I think that going forward, at least in the summer, I will have to be filming either on Fridays or Saturday mornings. I don't think I'm going to be able to film during the week, which literally doesn't matter to you guys because like you don't really have the same schedule I do and that's fine. So the way these reading updates are going to work is I don't like putting them out on weekends because everybody's busy on the weekend in the summer. They're literally like unless it's like monsooning outside like you guys are busy i am busy so i don't want to put reading updates up on the weekend so i will either be filming my reading updates on friday or saturday and then they will be going up probably monday morning at some point and um so basically you're going to be seeing like it's kind of outdated but not necessarily so it's going to be from what i have read from um Friday to the next Friday, but you won't be seeing it until Monday. So there's going to be a little bit of a delay, but that's literally the only thing I can think of to be able to film so you guys can watch these. And that's the only thing that's important is that it at least gets filmed. It might not be like the day of, but it is getting put out there. So kind of treating it like a reading vlog almost. Like technically I would like a vlog a whole week and then you guys wouldn't watch it until like the following week like the beginning of the following week or whatever so there's just a little bit of a delay and it's perfectly fine that's normal the first thing that the first book I want to talk about today is The Dragon and the Queen by Caitlin Davis and um, the reason I'm talking about it now is because I said in my wrap up for June my June wrap up July TBR video I said that I would talk about this in my next reading update and then I couldn't do a reading update that week so you're getting this another week late. Um, and because I'm not going to be doing like an official book review for this book or anything, I hadn't finished reading it um, when I filmed my June wrap up so I'm talking about it now. And um, this is a book that I buddy read with my friend Brianna. This was our buddy read for the month of June. And I really liked it. I was a little angry at the end. I like kind of the events that happened at the end. Um, the author also like alludes to or kind of introduces another character at the end of this book that is previously unknown in the, you know, the most of this book and the other two books in the series. So I'm a little upset about that. I kind of am already half determined not to like this new character just because I don't like it when authors introduce random characters when you know when you're this far into a series um sometimes it's okay if they're like not as important but this character is seems to be pretty important to the story and the plot so i'm kind of upset about that but um other than that this book had me on the edge of my seat like the entire time i was reading it like i literally was having such a hard time putting it down um it was really really good it was very fast-paced the characters didn't waste any time getting the story moving which was really good because the second book was like it dragged a little bit so um i really liked the change of pacing in this book quite a bit i gave this one a four out of five stars and i think i forgot to say it's ya fantasy so um if you're into avian inspired fantasy this one is actually pretty good um i can definitely recommend this to like not all ages because some adults might think it's really stupid but like YA like the younger YA can definitely read this stuff it's 
basically harmless. It's really, really good. And let's see. So the next couple of books I have on my list, I have, I'm cheating a little bit. I have not finished reading these, but um, I do plan to finish them up this weekend. So um, I figured I might as well just talk about them now. Um, we have, the first one is The Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien, and this is the one that I have been um, doing on audiobook. If you've watched any of my videos, you have heard me sing the praises of the Phil Deglish um, renditions of The Lord of the Rings on audio. Um, they are freaking amazing. They're so good. They are free to listen to. I will link all of them in the description, in the description box below so you guys can check them out. They are super nostalgic. Um, it is fan made, so it's not like an official audiobook, but he reads word per word every single word in these books. Like, it's not abridged, it's not an abridged audiobook by any means. He pulls um, audio from like the music from the movies. So, if you've watched the movies and you also like the books, or if you haven't um, read the books yet and you want to try the audiobooks out because you think the books would be too much definitely do it. It's so good. It's so worth the time to invest listening to it. It's excellent. Excellent quality. I love it so much. Obviously, this is going to get five stars from me because I really like it. So, um, and the audiobook is not hurting it by any means. So, this is one is going to end up getting five stars from me. The next book that I am also in the middle of but planning to finish reading this week is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. This is the first novel in the Wolf Hall trilogy by her and it is adult historical fiction. It is set in 1500s England and it focuses on the life and um, actions and things of a man named Thomas Cromwell who was very prominent in um, English like uh, the government type thing. I don't really know. Like. He's not noble, but he is somehow gotten his way into like being one of the king's closest advisors. So it's very interesting. Um, I love reading about older historical fiction, um, you know, and basically anything that's not World War II historical fiction, but all of the historical fiction these days is just about um, World War II. And I'm like, why? There's other things to talk about and read about and learn about and have fun and enjoy reading other than just World War II historical fiction. So anyways, anyways. That's an aside. So um, I really, really like this series or this book so far. I am about, I'm at 419. So I have this much left before I'm done with it. And it's very dense. I've been reading this book for like over 10 hours. And I mean, I'm close to being done. I probably have like a third of it left or something like that. And it's just really dense stuff. Um, it's kind of hard to follow the dialogue because it is not written um, I feel like it's written like how they would talk back then, so it's very hard to kind of for me to understand. Maybe this is how people in England talk, and because I'm American, I just don't understand um, very well. But I am getting more used to it. Like, obviously, the more I read it, the more used to it I'm getting. And so far, so good. Um, right now, this one is sitting at like four stars just because of how well it's written. And um, it just seems authentic. There are lots of terms in here that I do not understand. Um, I wish they were there was like a glossary or something in this book, so that is a downfall. I have had to use my phone like to Google things quite often because I'm just like I have no idea what the heck that is. Like I need some kind of like point to go off of here because I don't understand. So I have had to do that, but I feel like that just adds to the reading experience. Like, am I really learning anything if I'm not having to look stuff up? It's I don't know. It's just really good. Um, it's been great for me to read. It's definitely interesting. I literally am like just wanting to sit down and read it. So that is fun. Um, yeah, if you guys are into historical fiction or like historical fiction set in England that's not also set in World War II, then probably check this one out unless you're like not all about that medieval life. That's fine. Um, there are religious themes in here because of the time that it is set in. Um, there was a huge... Um, what's that word called it starts with a p um prosecution of the church of england against christians or like people that believed in um the new testament which is you know about jesus and stuff so there is some of that in here there's a lot of religious references so if you're sensitive to that kind of thing you might not enjoy this book but i'm a christian and i think it's very interesting to learn about 
um, this kind of stuff from, you know, a long time ago because it's really not that much different than we treat each other now. We're just not, you know, stabbing each other with swords and torturing people. Um, we just call names on social media these days. So, um, there is that aspect to it. So if you don't want to read about anything religious, you might want to skip this one. But I think in the histor set in the historical context that it is, it is really good. It's very well written. It's well researched, that kind of thing. So, um, it's recommended. I recommend it. I think it's great. Now, moving on to plans for next week. Um, I have two books lined up, and because The Lord of the Rings and um, Wolf Hall are both very dense books for me, I have my audiobook and um, a physical book picked out. So for the audiobook, I am going to go with um, Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Moss, and this is a reread for me. Um, I have said before that I prefer to listen to audiobooks as rereads. Rarely will I listen to a book I have not read before on an audiobook because I have a tendency to zone out and, um, you know, quit, kind of like lose focus for a little bit and then I'm like, wait, what did I miss? So if it's a reread, I don't feel quite so bad. Like, I don't feel like I need to rewind it so that I can listen to the parts that I missed. Um, so I am going to listen to this one on audiobook this week. And then the one that I'm going to read is The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni, and this is a YA fantasy. Um, it's fairly new. I think it was released in March or April of this year, so it's a new release. Um, it has a wonderful premise. Um, there's a girl, the main character, has some kind of magic, and since it says The Prison Healer and there is like botanical stuff on the cover, I'm assuming it has something to do with like um, medicinal type stuff, but is like all natural. So um, I'm interested to see what this one is about. And of course, Crown of Midnight, you guys, you know, most of you do that it is a YA fantasy and it is the second book in um, the Throne of Glass series. So I am excited to continue my reread and I'm excited to pick this one up. I just decided that I needed something easy to listen to and something um, not quite so complicated to read after reading Wolf Hall and The Lord of the Rings because they are so dense. Um, so my brain needs a break this week. I mean, we are on summer break, so the month of July is my summer break and I plan to read two books every week and I can accomplish that if I have one going on audio and if I have one that I'm reading physically because I will listen to the audiobook in the morning when I am playing Animal Crossing before my kids get up. Yes, I wake up early so that I can have some me time before my children wake up and and then at night I usually sit down and read my physical book so that I don't have a screen in front of my face because I don't like being on a screen before I go to bed because my brain just will not shut up. So um, yeah, those are my plans for the coming week. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you have read any of these books, let me know what you thought about it in the comments and let me know what you're reading next. I'd love to know. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye!